Welcome back. What we're going to work on now is a new sample project here. We're going to do a more advanced fluid effect, something more practical that makes a lot of sense, and we're going to make it look nice. Um, we're going to do a pretty cliche example here. We're going to simulate some wine being poured into a glass. But uh, it may sound simple, but there will be some challenges in order to get that wine or liquid to look just right and behave right as well. So we're going to do the complete thing from top to bottom. Um, and I'm going to be going a little bit quicker here since I've already covered a lot of basic stuff of Lagoa. So let's cover some more advanced things and move a little bit faster. So I'm going to open up a sample scene here. Sample scene I'm going to open up is going to be called uh, sample example 3 wine. So open that up. And I've already got a scene set up for us. We've already got a null for the emitter and some collision objects we could use because uh, no point creating an emitter and all that from scratch. I think you get the idea. Also, if we render out, we get a very nice mental ray render. If we check this out, you can see what it looks like. So all the lighting, shaders, all that stuff is already set up uh, for your convenience. So what I'm going to do is pretty simple. I'm going to go to my Create Particles menu. I'm going to create a volume emission. I'm going to select my null. And I'm going to select this wine glass here as the uh, collider. And at the moment, I can't select it because, obviously, if I go to the Explorer, I have the wine glass set to be unselectable, so I'll select it from the Explorer. It's going to set up everything for me automatically, and then we can get kick-started. So let me close all this stuff. I'm going to open up my Ice Tree view over here. All right, so there's my Lagoa Point Cloud with its Ice Tree. Let's start to edit this stuff. So I'll start off with the uh, Emit Grid node over here. Resolution, I'm going to set that to 0.3. I already have some settings that I'm going to use. I'm going to use um, hex placement over here uh, for the generation. Um, all this other stuff, I think I'm just going to leave this alone. And down here for the initial force, I do want to give this a bit of initial force because I want to simulate, you know, water kind of coming out of some, or not water, but wine coming out of some pressure out of a source like a bottle or something like that. So for the Y, I'm going to go with negative uh, 5. And just for fun, I'm going to give it 2 for the Z, so that this stuff kind of flies out a little bit in that direction. For my Lagoa Add Forces, I'm going to disable air density here. I'm going to bring in an air density manually. Again, you don't have to do this, but this is just my workflow. I like doing it this way. I'm not going to mess with anything else here. The main material, I don't want this guy, so I'm going to delete him. I'm going to go to my material types for Lagoa, and I'm going to get myself... A, uh, some kind of a liquid or watery material. So let me go with liquid water. I think it's going to work out just fine. I'm going to plug this into the execute one uh, port of the Lagoa phase. Let me open up the PPG here. Uh, my frame range is already set to a thousand, so that's fine. If I hit play, you can see my particles come out, and they come out in one shot, which is obviously not good. So let me go back to the make grid node and set this to play every frame. Now you can see I get my particles coming out and dropping into the glass. Awesome, so it's uh, behaving the way that I would expect. But let me take my liquid water uh, material node, which is this one down here, and let me change some settings over here. Um, I already have some settings that I found that I like. So for the surface tension, I'm actually going to set that to 2. For internal pressure and external pressure, I'm going to set those both to 1. I'm not going to solve viscosity, which reminds me, I'm going to go to the multi-physics node here. I'm going to optimize things a little bit. Uh, Substeps at 3 is probably going to work out just fine. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn off all this elasticity stuff. I'm not using viscosity, so I'll turn it off as well. So I'm just going to keep density and uh, pressure. And I'll just double check to make sure that's all I'm using. Yes, it is. Um, so that's pretty good. Another thing that I'm going to do that's going to give me some interesting behavior that I found. If I hit play, now my particles come down. Looks very natural. You can see the formation of the particles there. It looks very, very natural. The way it splashes at the bottom of the uh, glass. And the way that the particles form these really cool kind of a liquidy type patterns. Looks awesome. So I'm very happy with this. But another thing that I'm going to do is... I'm going to take the wine glass, so I'll select in the Explorer. I'm going to go to its uh, ice tree. Remember that collision objects should always have a set collision data compound on them. I will go a set collision data. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go ahead and activate the soft repulsion. I'm going to set it to 
negative 1. And after that's set to negative 1, what I'm going to do is let me go back to my point cloud, refresh the ice tree over here. I'm going to go to the multi physics. Because I'm using soft repulsion, I need to come here to the soft repulsion parameters. They're off by default, so you have to go ahead and uh, enable that. So make sure you enable soft, uh, soft repulsion here if you're going to be using that. The multi physics is already set up at a sub steps value of 3, which is going to give me pretty good accurate results. Let me play this. There's my particles come down here into my glass. Looks very liquidy. I'm using a ton of particles. Having the resolution set at 0.3 is giving me a lot of particles. Um, not too many to the point where it's going to you know, slow me down too much, but enough to the point where I'm going to get myself some pretty good results. You, you can see the water coming down and everything. Looks pretty good. All right, awesome. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cache the simulation. That way everything goes by a lot faster. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's go ahead and cache this. Now, the amount of caching I'm going to do, um, you can cache to wherever you want, but I think I'm going to cache to frame 1,000. I think will work out just fine, just so I have plenty of time to uh, to simulate this. So if you remember, to cache is pretty simple. All you need to do is go to the basic emission point cloud over here. And uh, let me actually rename that just to keep things a little bit organized. I just realized I don't like the uh, the name of this. So I'm going to keep point cloud at the end of the name, but I'm going to change. I'm going to call this uh, wine point cloud, or actually wine simulated point cloud. So it's very easy for me to quickly look at it and know. Okay, this is the wine simulated point cloud, not the cached uh, version. Okay. So I'm going to save real quick. I'm going to take this point cloud. Uh, I'm going to go to the simulation menu here on the particles. I'm going to go to save cache on selection. That's going to go ahead and pop up this uh, progress bar and start caching everything through. By default, uh, remember it's going to cache from frame 1 all the way to 1000. So uh, we are doing a lot of particles, so it's going to take a little while to cache all this. So at this point in time, you might want to take a little, I don't know, coffee break or something. Uh, go get some water or something like that or check your email or something. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. I'm going to let this cache um, and end this video here. In the next video, I'm going to pick up where I left off after the stuff has been cached and uh, we'll continue with this uh, little project here.